This week on Crime and Conspiracy, brace yourself for a deep dive into the shadows of the First Great War, now known as World War I. We'll explore the untold theories and conspiracies that lurk in the dark corners, unveiling the secrets behind this transformative conflict. At 11 a.m., the 11th of November 1918, the noise just vanished. Wine glasses went up, soldiers cheered, and they put down their guns, turning the trembling sounds of machine guns into happy songs. The 11th hour marked the cessation of World War I, transforming the chaos into a symphony of relief. It's like the craziest, bloodiest tale hip pours in the blink of an eye. Ever wondered how the world got tangled up in the chaos of World War I over an assassination? It wasn't just an ordinary disaster, it was an unprecedented explosion that rocked the globe. The story isn't as straightforward as it seems. Get ready for the World War I conspiracy, where history's hidden chapters come to light, a climax they didn't teach you in history class. To comprehend history, we must go back in time. Most historians would agree that the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand's assassination started it all, but beyond that, there's not much argument. The question we're looking at today is how. And that's a more complex query because we can simply discuss a series of events, but it would still be complicated. On the 28th of June 1914, Prince Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, and his wife Sophie, found themselves basking under Sarajevo's sunny haze for a military inspection. In retrospect, it's a risky provocation, like tossing a match in a bundle of dynamite. Serbian nationalism is rising, the Balkans are in a tumultuous diplomatic crisis and regional wars, and tension is brewing between the Kingdom of Serbia and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The 28th of June was not a great day for the Archduke to visit Bosnia. It was the anniversary of the Serbs' defeat at Kosovo Polj in 1389 and St. Vitsasur's Day, a celebration for Slavic nationalists and a Bosnian Serb named Garvalo and his co-conspirators chose to celebrate Slavic nationalism by killing Franz Ferdinand. Despite the warnings and threats, the prince and his wife's royal security is completely lacking, they board in an open-top sports car and proceed on a pre-announced route in the middle of a city, the visit is going as planned and then suddenly the bomb goes off. As we already know, the motorcade was a death trap. Six young assassins, armed with bombs and pistols, lined up the royal couple's route that morning. But it turns out that killing is simpler in films compared to practical life as the first two men failed to throw bombs on a car but the third, Nidella Brinovich, panicked and threw his bomb into the Archduke's convertible. The bomb fell into the way of the next car, injuring 20 men but killing none. Nidell swallowed a cyanide pill before jumping into the river, but unfortunately, the pill expired, and he vomited it out, finding out that the river had dried out due to heat. Nidell found himself in the custody of police, while the rest of the killers vanished in a crowd. The prince and his wife were safe and rushed to the town hall to complete their scheduled visit there they listened to the bunch of usual speeches. Having narrowly avoided a fatal encounter, Prince Archduke cancelled the rest of the meetings to visit the injured men in the hospital. Through an extraordinary turn of events, the driver made a wrong U-turn and stopped the car in front of another runaway murderer Garvalo Princip, he was around the bakery maybe looking out for a nice chocolate pastry to digest his failure. He took total advantage of the situation and shot two bullets from a short distance, so Sophie died instantly, but Franz Ferdinand's last words were, Sophie, Sophie, don't die, stay alive for our children. He died shortly after. It's important to note that Austrian authorities and Franz Ferdinand were aware of a murder attempt. Here's a quote from Franz Ferdinand from the day he began his journey in Sarajevo and his car overheated. 
Our journey starts with an extremely promising omen. Here our car burns and down there they will throw bombs at us. A single ripple of bullets shot by a poor, physically weak, and South Slavic nationalist teenager indeed changed the world forever. History remembers him as the biggest teenage troublemaker. Garvalo was arrested on the spot. Historians wrote that the First World War started after this incident. Princip was two weeks short of the death penalty, as Serbian law stated that a murderer under the age of 20 couldn't be sentenced to death. Therefore, he was sentenced to 20 years in jail. But he died of tuberculosis on the 28th of April 1918, while the war which he ignited was killing thousands of people. Garvalo and his co-partners didn't choose France randomly, Franz was to inherit the Austro-Hungarian Empire after his uncle's death. It couldn't be long before his uncle died. Even the official portrait was ready. Franz Ferdinand with stars and sash only the emperor could wear. Interestingly, he wasn't well liked in his own country, not by his uncle who headed the empire, and certainly not by Bosnian Slavic nationalists, nor by everyone else in Europe. Journalists who have closely studied the history of the Austro-Hungarian Empire have claimed that he became wealthy just before he reached his teenage years when his cousin died and he chose to inherit a vast state. Another death in 1889 changed his destiny enormously when his cousin Prince Rudolf took his own life. That incident made him next in line to rule the empire, different conspiracies circled, but researchers have agreed that Franz's uncle didn't like him because of his soft side towards South Slavic nationalists. The Austro-Hungarian Empire wanted to make a unified and greater country and was involved in suppressing the rights of South Slavic minorities. Franz Ferdinand hated the Hungarians and was considered the only leader who could come up with a suitable solution to the regional problems of Serbian expansion and Bosnian independence. Journalistic accounts from the time stated that although Franz's uncle wasn't fond of him much, as an emperor, he certainly felt a responsibility to do something. The public sentiments were hurt, and they demanded a strong answer to this loss. Otherwise, the Serbian extremists would feel free to expand their territory, although it may sound like a schoolyard bully, the idea remains that the motivation behind initiating a war in World War I becomes more meaningful when considering who desires victory, despite the common belief that the war was pointless. Some research journalists still debate whether Princip and his fellow assassins acted alone or as a part of a larger conspiracy backed by the Serbian government. However, the Austrians engaged in war, as they assumed the regional conflict to be part of a larger agenda. To answer this question, we need to go back to 1903 when Serbia killed pro-Austro-Hungary rulers. In 1914, these tensions escalated as the Serbian and Bosnian Serb nationalist ignited the flames by creating a militant organization to obtain their territorial objectives. Some explorers of history and journalists find the secretive nature of organizations like the Black Hand. Princip was a member of this scare-sounding military group Black Hand, a group solely dedicated to creating a greater and independent Serbia that would include Bosnia. Garvalo and his partner's actions were fueled by a desire for a South Slavic nation, particularly from Austria-Hungary. An official statement at his trial stated, I am a Yugoslav nationalist, aiming for the unification of all Yugoslavs, and I do not care what form of state but it must be free from Austria. There's a hot conspiracy in the journalist world that the Serbian chief of military intelligence plotted the assassination. In May, Princip and two associates went to Belgrade, Serbia, where Black Hand provided for pistols and six bombs to them, and Princip had some shooting practice in a city park. According to his instructor he was not good at shooting. Other students were still better than him whenever he missed the target people standing around him would laugh at him. He would shoot trees instead of targeting the goal. Well, this theory is pretty controversial, so much so that people enjoy analyzing the situation. 
Want to show off your witty analytical skills? Drop a comment as to what you think happened. There's a greater chance of Serbia's involvement in this matter that the great empire Austro-Hungarian overlooked as a threat to their nationalism. Here were the immediate results, word of the assassination spread instantly throughout Europe. Journalists of that time reported the shockwaves felt across Europe, and the rapid developments that unfolded after the assassination. In Bosnia, by the end of July more than 5,000 Serbs had been jailed, many of whom were later hanged over when the war broke out. Now, there were one or two European leaders who were worried about the political consequences of the act. The rest of Europe reacted by thinking it was more the same, the usual Balkan business, another Balkan killing. There was very little mourning, even in Vienna, for the unloved Franz Ferdinand, and his funeral service lasted for 15 minutes. There was one thing that became apparent only years later. Princip, or the Serbs, or the Black Hand, or whoever was really behind the killing, got the wrong guy. The world faced its consequences for decades. Despite all of Franz's talk about Serbs being pigs, or Russian autocracy being a good model for the future, for all his outdated and backward beliefs. He had strong opinions on two important things, he was against going into a war with Russia and stated repeatedly that he would do anything in his power to prevent it. Secondly, he was in favor of an independent and unified Slavic state. One night after dinner, he made a toast to peace. What would we get out of war with Serbia, we would lose the lives of young men, and would spend money better used elsewhere, and what would be gained for heaven sarke a few plum trees, some pastures full of goat drunches, and a bunch of rebellious killers. So when the Serb killed Fran Ferdinand, it was a killing not only against Serbian interests in the region, but it became the solid justification for Austria-Hungary to invade Serbia. That's how an act of terrorism initiated by a teenager turned into the first major world war of the 20th century. Now the Austrians and Serbians both imagined that the war would stay localized to their region since they shared the previous history of conflicts. You know, like in 1908, 1912, and 1913. We'll get into what made 1914 different this time in our next video.